The Glen Allen Jaguars look for a little pick-me-up on the gridiron at Hermitage while Verina just tries to keep it rolling at Hanover. Welcome to Sportswire, I'm Will Catterley. After a historic 5-0 start for the Glen Allen Jaguars, well, the Jags fell back to earth a bit after a resounding win by Verina over the visiting Jags just one week ago. Still, Glen Allen had a chance to get back to their winning ways with a victory on the road again this time at Hermitage. Both teams with a win would provide some very useful power points as the playoff picture becomes clearer. Hermitage would love a win before heading to Highland Springs next, while the Jags, facing the Panthers specifically, had one last major chance to improve on their already high Class 6 seeding. So both teams with a lot to gain with a potential win on Friday night. Coming out of the fog, the homestanding Hermitage Panthers on homecoming. Taking on the Glen Allen Jaguars early on. You know, one thing Glen Allen couldn't do last week against Verona, run the rock, especially this guy. Dallas Chavis changing things up in a hurry. Big time gashing run, but the Hermitage defense not going to allow it. Again, at least not on this drive. Fourth down and short, Glen Allen goes for it. Hermitage gets a stop, so the Glen Allen defense, however, would show up as well. Aaron Digsbury with the stop, and then next possession, na na dialing long distance, he's got him in! Touchdown, Jaguars! Javion Harris! Stealing a little bit of the uh, Hermitage touchdown celebration themselves. They go for two as well. Eight nothing Jags. Later though, Hermitage gonna get back on the board themselves. It's a block punt and it's a two run homer for Juan Soto. No, just kidding, it's a, it's a safety. Number 20 gets in on it. Deshaun Allums and it's all about the Hermitage special teams eight to two. Second quarter, same score. Roll out. Tell me if you haven't seen this before. Ben Yane taking off, letting his legs do the work all the way for six. Touchdown, Hermitage. So all of a sudden, all the way back come the Panthers. Once down, 8 0. Now up 9 8. And everybody's a winner at halftime. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Homecoming queen, Kyra Birno. She gets the tiara for the 2024 queen. And Landon Reeves, 2024 homecoming king. Congratulations to Kira Birno and Landon Reeves, your queen and king at Hermitage for 2024. Second half, nine to eight. Here he comes again. Ben Yane this time. Nice job by that Glen Allen defense for the most part, corralling Yane and then setting the edge defensively, getting outside. Number 19 had himself a ball game. A.J. Ogbonna was everywhere in the offensive backfield. Ben Yane trying to get things going. That pass is intercepted. Cam Tiller cashes in. Cam with the interception, returning it deep inside the Hermitage 35-yard line. Nana knows what to do from that point. Fires finds his receiver on the slant. Davis Fisher catches one for a first down, and then it would lead to this. A couple plays later, just hand it off to the big man. Dallas Chavis, touchdown. Glenn Allen, Jaguars find Pater. And since they went for two and it worked once, try, try again. Easy squeezy, lemon peasy. Number 26, Walter Brooks, 16-9. Glenn Allen, I said 19 was everywhere. Make yourself a huddle highlight, my friend. AJ Ogbonna. And then how about some special teams? For Glen Allen, they had a problem getting their punt off. Hermitage couldn't get that one. Number nine, Aaron Digsbury back in there to get the punter, and it would lead to the one-yard touchdown plunge. Almost looked like the tush push there, high school style. Nana Utsi, 23-9, Glen Allen at that point. Is Hermitage done? Well, not yet, but they've completely run out of time. Way late in this ball game. Running, running, seconds, tick, tick, tick. They need two scores. It is a lateral from Ben Yane to number four, Erlante Winston. Long touchdown for Winston. Prompt for Hermitage was a play took so long that there was only one second left in the fourth quarter. 
And that means that would be your ball game because you can't recover an onside kick with no time coming off the clock. Glenn Allen in a big win, 23-16. Meanwhile, Verina going into their game against Hanover had one thing in mind. Do not get complacent against a pretty good Hawks team even after their impressive victory over Glen Allen. The Blue Devils headed to Hanover for some Thursday night football with only one loss on the year. And one thing that always helps when you are a road favorite and you're playing great football is getting off to a great start. And uh, you know what? K.J. Weish and company, that offense did just that. Early first quarter, Weish finds his receiver, number six, doing the honors, Damari Connor. It would lead to this. Running on the left side and big time chunk yardage. Yeah, they had some chunk yard plays. Damari Carter again. Weish, roll out left on fourth and goal. Gets the touchdown run. And Verina had the early touchdown advantage. 8.05 to go in the first quarter. Now, quarterback, Mr. Christ has been excellent. Matter, matter of fact, Richmond Times Dispatch Player of the Week, Offensive Player of the Week. And Got a good arm, good receivers, connects right there. Sets it up for this field goal. Verina's defense would hold, and the kick would just be short and a little bit to the right. So, Verina defense holds. Still 7-0. Back to the offense and the ground and pound game. My goodness, I might have ran through there. Look at him go. Number five, Devin. Harry and the Hendersons all the way inside the Hanover five-yard line. It would set it up for this. Why? Little RPO play action, finds his man, Damari Carter with the touchdown catch. Now Weiss, one touchdown rushing, one touchdown passing. Easy squeezy lemon peasy, 13 0, 134 to go, first quarter. Everything coming up, Blue Devils. Weiss, that play was excellent because he acted like he was going to run the football. Gets the linebackers to look at what he's doing with the run. Instead, he connects with his receiver, number 10, Rion Bonner. Now, Nothing would come from that drive. However, Verina's defense would come alive. They get the sack there. They take over in good field position. This will work. That dog will hunt all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Verina. Miles can run for miles and miles. Anderson with a touchdown. 20 to nothing, Verina with 2.34 to go. Hanover looking for any signs of life on offense, but that Verina vaunted defensive line living in the offensive backfield once again. Number 59 on the stop. And yeah, the Verina offense take over. That was our fourth down attempt for Hanover. KJ Weish, his second rushing touchdown. This one goes for nearly 50 yards to Pater. All Blue Devils, all night long, all night long, all night. Touchdown, Verina. They're up 28 0 with 3.29 to go in the third. We go to the fourth now, same score. You can't keep a good quarterback down all game. And what a great catch by the receiver, number 33. Nolan Chris connects with Mr. Owen Long. And he reached out long for that touchdown handle. What do you got to do? Onside kick it. The one caveat to Verina's success their hands team was not great in this one. Hanover not only recovered one onside kick, they got two. This is what happened from the first onside kick they recovered. Touchdown pass, Chris finds Malachi Matt. Game not over yet. That would decrease the advantage for Brian at 28-13, 5.35 to go. Later, they got another onside kick. Nothing came from it because, well, the Brian defense, they were eaten. Another stop, another sack, number 59. Tramel Carter, he had a couple of sacks in this one. Verina wins again, 28-13. We've got some guys volleyball action and then some when we come back. The Blue Devils face their rival Highland Springs at home and then an even bigger adversary Saturday morning. I'll explain straight ahead. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome. Oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, Chief. I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? Colleges love extracurricular activities. That just really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us. 
go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to GetSchool.com for more info. Welcome back to Sportswire. Well, it's not often that you see the Rhino boys volleyball team, or any team for that matter, wearing the color red. The boys volleyball team had reason to do so in a match against Highland Springs. All heart, no surrender, because they were a big part of the American Heart Association Heart Walk. They took part in it on a Saturday morning, walking to save lives. Um, this is the Richmond Heart Walk, and we are representing Verena Boys Volleyball. When I was a player, I had a lot of opportunities to do volunteer work with my teams, and it was a really important team bonding exercise, and it really got me interested in, in volunteer work. And um, my six-month-old nephew had to have open-heart surgery last year, and it was a really scary thing, and I wanted to be able to give back to the American Heart Association, so I thought... Let's put those two together and we'll do the Richmond Heart Walk as a team. I love I love supporting my coaches. You know, Coach Darcy, you know, she really supported my journey, my first year playing volleyball, and I just, she's a great coach. And Coach Vance, Coach Vance too. And Verena's boys volleyball team were not the only ones supporting the American Heart Association. Deep run boys wrestling team, as you saw there. They were part of the walk as well. Coach Darcy's nephew made a great recovery, by the way. Congratulations to everyone who took part in support of the American Heart Association. And Verina had work to do before the walk Saturday morning. They had a big match Thursday night. Their rivals, East End rivals, yeah, all heart, no surrender. Even the Highland Springs coaches were donning the red as well. They're taking on Highland Springs, who their program back after 10 years. This is a good volleyball match. First set action. Check out Lamont Mayo with the kill. And Highland Springs is there for the block, but it goes out of play. Point Verina. More from the first set. Verina on the serve. Gets a nice stop right there at the front of the net. Israel Mays makes it happen. More Verina on the serve once again, and that will come up aces. Number 12 doing the action on that one. Lintrell Emery and uh, Blue Devils looking very good in this one. Back to Lamont Mayo on the serve. Springers trying to get back in this one. And they keep it alive, but only for so long. Number 10 got in on the action, Donovan Woolridge. And how about another ace? Blue Devils looking really good in the opening set. Eight on the serve, still first set action. Springer's not going to go down without a fight, not by a long shot. They get that one over. Verona going for the kill, but Johnny on the spot. Highland Springs is there. Number 11 doing the honors. He gets a point, Chris Draper. But it was too much for Rhina as that kill will work. It finds the floor. 25-13, Verina wins the opening set. However, Highland Springs would come back. Second set action, getting a little high jumps, high hops right there. Chris Draper and company getting things going. Better passing in this second set. Leads to better opportunities, just how it works. Another point for the Springers. Yeah, just puts pressure on the defense. Good get right there. Can't quite keep it alive, though. Great equalizer for Verina. The serve. They were the better side serving the volleyball, and, well, you get extra points that way. That dog will hunt as well. It's good for the point, but no, sir, it's not. They get... Called for an illegal rotation, does Verina. So it's point Highland Springs, and that was set point. So the Springers take the second set, 25-19. Verina, not shaken, not stirred by that moment. That's going to find itself to the floor. Point, Blue Devils, number 15. Nice job. Connor Vance, more from Verina. The kill, that dog will hunt as well. Number eight getting in on the action. Malik Walker, Texas Ranger, here he is on the serve. That one is taken care of by Highland Springs, and right in your living room, they get the point. Springers back in it, but this was Verina's set to lose, and uh, they had no thinking of losing that, although Highland Springs back-to-back -back points. They could maybe smell the upset here. Great get right there. It was a nice serve, but a better get by Verina. Springers trying to set this one up. 
Blue Devils have other ideas. Point. Verina, nicely done. All started with effort there. Israel Mays once again. Springers trying to get the answer, but no, sir. Mays says, uh-uh, not here. Point, Verina. Set, Verina. They're up two to one. They win the third set, 25-14. On to the fourth. Chance to take a three to one win. And it's hammer time. Number five, Lamont Mayo again. Spreading the love, then on the serve. Sky Gresham just gets that one in. Gresham again on the serve. Springers looking for answers. Verina looking for a home match victory. Highland Springs gets it over. Good pass, great finish, Blue Devils. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Donovan Woolridge and company get the victory. Three sets to one. It's back to the gridiron when we return. Freeman had a chance to get back to their winning ways when they played host to Tucker. Plus, Henrico hits the road going after their second win of the season at Mechanicsville. That's next. Todd's a great guy. I mean... Look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Welcome back to Sports Wire to Freeman High School. We go back to football, back to gridiron action. Mavs entertaining Tucker. Theme of the week, Sports Wire is special teams on punts. We either got blocks, we got safeties, we got touchdowns. At this point, it's a two pointer, two run shot, two nothing. Freeman, and the beauty of a safety when you get one is you get the ball right back, and that would lead to this. Number 81, leaving everyone in his dust. Nolan Shizik. First down and goal. Ooh, tricky, tricky Mavs. This little counter right there, a little run for the Kevin China touchdown. One yard officially, 9 nothing. Mavs would be a lot more where that came from. 7-19 to go in the first. Tucker trying to get some momentum going. This is a fourth down opportunity. They got stuff right at the line of scrimmage. That means Freeman takes over deep in Tucker territory, and they would do this with it. It is a simple pitch to a, a really great running back, Mr. Warwick Butter Stevenson. Inside the 15, it would set it up for this. Little pass on the screen. Tucker actually had that diagnosed well, just couldn't make the play. Pass caught Alec Kingsbury. Touchdown catch. Freeman is a cruising. A la Cobra Kai celebration. 16 0, 431 to go. Now, Tucker trying to get something going offensively using their aerial attack, but that line could not protect the quarterback. And that's just a lot of different Mavericks in there on the sack, setting it up for this. How about the power running? Warwick Butter Stevenson. He's not just slippery, he's strong. All the way down inside the two, call it the one yard line. That, as they say, would lead to this. Little pitch one way, little pitch the other way. That works too. China, touchdown, his second of the night. Freeman up 22 nothing. Still in the first, 104 to go. In the first, Tigers. And this is when things just aren't going your way. Tip, tip, bobbled. Look what I got! It's intercepted! Pierce, Bruce, touchdown! Freeman! And the Mavs up 30. They put a 30 burger up in the first quarter. Second quarter, quarterback George Davis. He's got a man. That man's got a catch. That man's got a first down. He's also got this. RPO, read option keeper. Easy squeezy lemon peasy. It really was. George Davis takes it himself. Touchdown run for Freeman. Mavs putting stress on that Tucker D. It's 37 to nothing at that point. And then uh, more quarterback pressure. Firing, trying to make a play downfield. I cannot blame the man, but Jamal Ferguson finds a wrong jersey. Number 22, Hagen Robinson. Mr. Robinson with the interception. Mr. Robinson leading to the offense. Firing, finding George Davis. 
has eyes for number four, Jefferson Meade. Meade, the touchdown catch. Flag for a little extra celebration. It wasn't all bad news for Tucker because this dude, even in triple coverage, makes plays. My goodness, does he make plays. Donnell Douglas, touchdown, Tucker. They are on the board. No donut, no goose egg for the Tigers, but it was too much Freeman in this one. They win this one going away at home. Happy homecoming for Freeman. 50 to 12 is your fight. Let's hit the road. The Hen traveling to the Mechanicsville. Well, the home of the Mustangs, that is. First play from scrimmage. Lavelle Winston's got a man to the left. It is Kennard Tyler. Tyler, touchdown. Warriors come out and play. They did. They played well. Touchdown was so good, they'd go for two, and they'd get it. It's also a theme here on Sports Wire and Football Highlights. Darren Williams, a lot of two-point conversions happening. 8 nothing, especially early in the game. 8 nothing, 11.49 to go. Northwestern, uh, I mean, uh, Mechanicsville with the football, and uh, Norfolk State, I mean, Henrico with the stop. A lot of men in there. Jamonte Archer, one of them. Uh, defensive line played great in this one, and I'm sure they were happy to get after it and eat. Number 50 gets in there, tosses them around. Wee! Good for the sack. And right go, Warriors looking good. Second quarter, same score. Mechanicsville, tricky, tricky Mustangs trying to pass it with the halfback pass. Uh, diagnosed well by the defensive backs. Number 24, Sean Green with the interception. And then that would lead to this, a short touchdown plunge. Warriors, they did come out and play. Behold the green and gold. Actually, that play was stuffed on fourth down. I thought they got in. They didn't. Doesn't matter. Eight nothing. They get the ball back in the second quarter. And coming right in your living room. Look out! Hitting a member of the coaching staff. He'd be on. Number five with the catch. Well done. Kennard Tyler. That would lead to this. This time they're going to cross the goal line. Yes. Touchdown. Warriors. Now they got a two touchdown lead. Darren Williams handling the rock on that one. 4.52 to go. 14 nothing. The Kings will try to get something going on offense, and here comes the blitz, forcing an early throw and forcing an INT. Nicely done by the defensive backs. Aladdin Sims with the Oski on that one to lead to this. Nice play. Well read, but amazing footwork by Darren Williams. The escape ability on the screen. And uh, yeah, that'll work. 14-0. Changing sides now, same drive next quarter. Leads to the touchdown run from Lavelle Winston. Dialing his own number, he liked it so much, he's gonna go ahead and go for two and die for the pile on himself. Touchdown, Henrico! They get a win and they get a shutout. 22-0 the final. Other scores, deep run. It's not your father's Thomas Jefferson. The Vikings are good, they've been good for a while. 36-14, TJ with the win. Island Springs don't look now. Here come the Springers, 41-0. They beat Potomac of Maryland, their second straight shutout. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us. And you can always follow us on X and watch episodes on YouTube. I can't wait to see y'all next time on Sportswire.